What's up guys? I wasn't planning on doing this video, but I was just on the couch a few minutes ago minding my own business, not bothering anybody. I was just, you know, reading a book, playing my Yonix guitar a little bit, and then my regular guitar a little bit. Then I went scrolling on my phone, which is when I got a notification. It seemed harmless at first, but it turns out I have a cyber bully. And I just, I can't believe what he said. I'm still dealing with a lot of emotions, but yeah, just watch this quick clip. Let me know what you guys think. I can't believe what he said. Hello and welcome to a review video of the Head Radical Pro. This is actually a pretty exciting racket for me. It wasn't necessarily on my radar, but I've acquired an eye recently for parallel drilling, and I'll talk about that real And this guy's like way too obsessed with parallel drilling. Why do you care so much about parallel drilling, you idiot? How dare you, Tencom? But you've asked for it, so here is why I care about parallel drilling. We're gonna break it down into four sections for this video. In order, we'll talk about why does it matter? After that, we'll talk about why doesn't everyone use it? And by everyone, I really mean the companies. Why isn't everyone manufacturing their rackets with parallel drilling? Third, we'll talk about how you can tell if your racket has parallel drilling even before you buy it, which is a method I use pretty often to determine if I'm even interested. And last but not least, since Tencom needs to know, we'll talk about why I care so much. So for this first section where I'm going to talk about why it matters, we're gonna to cut to a clip of me on my phone because in order to more effectively explain this, I really have to zoom in on a tennis racket to make my point. So bear with me through my explanation. It's not the most scientific breakdown, but I don't really think it needs to be. I think the things that I'm pointing out are very intuitive and anyone that understands that a racket is under tension should be able to follow what I'm pointing out here. So let's cut to this clip. Oh, and last thing before the clip starts, I wanna say that every racket is different. Some rackets have a lot of parallel drilling. Some only have them on a few areas of the racket and some don't use it at all, such as the Pro Staff. But the racket we're gonna be using in this video is a Head Gravity Pro, which actually makes pretty good use of parallel drilling. Here we have the Gravity Pro by Head. And actually most of the strings are parallel drilled. You can kind of observe that here. But let's move a little bit further away from the center of the mains and move towards the edge. Right here is the first main from the center, which is not parallel drilled. Let's take a look at the throat. So follow me back here. That's where the string pops out for these mains here. That means this center point between these two grommets is dead in the center which means the force that is being applied for these strings under tension is pulling the frame this way, just straight up. Now, if we move over here, this is where the string comes out for these grommets. Now, just by looking at this shape, or maybe this shape, you might think, based on what we observed over here, that over here, this string might be coming in and coming out here because that would also mean the section between the two strings is directly in the middle of where the force is being applied. But that's not the case. Instead, this is where the strings come out for this and this main. So this area has to take a sharp, jagged turn right here before it can go back up again. And I have two issues with that. One is that as this is trying to straight out, it's causing a force that wants to straighten this racket frame out because you have this corner right here and this string under tension is trying to straighten out, but the racket won't let it. And in between all that drama is a grommet that is obviously under a lot of stress. You can see how distorted it is. But my main complaint is that it is causing a stress on the frame because the strings really want to straighten out, but the racket won't quite let it. Whereas there is no such awkward asymmetrical force here. And I actually think that the head gravity does a pretty good job of avoiding that on most of the strings. But once the angles get a little more extreme, which they do around the throat, it gets a little hard to do parallel drilling still. The other thing, let's talk about this section and this section again. When the strings are mounted with parallel drilling, the actual mounting point where the string is secured is back here. And from this point on, the string is just feeding through the grommet all the way up the length of the main. 
when you have it feeding through here, it's actually secured here, right where the grommet is, because it has to take that sharp corner and it's actually mounted right here. So you can almost think of this main as starting here and this main as starting up here. So it is that in addition to the stress that the grommet, the frame and the string are under by being under so much tension by taking this extreme corner right here, as well as the force generated here that is trying to straighten out, but the frame won't let it. And you might not think that's very significant, but just imagine this string and this string are under 50 pounds and they're both pulling right here. And then there's also this one pulling at 50 pounds and then this one pulling at 50 pounds and another pulling at 50 pounds. All that weight being pulled at this angle, I'd rather it not be. All right, you guys still with me? So that's basically my observation as to why it matters. I think it affects the longevity of your grommets, right? They're just jammed up in the corner of your frame. And the strings, especially when they're coming out at that angle, have a lot of leverage against the frame. And on top of that, the actual length of the main isn't starting at the back of the frame where the string would actually enter. The length is starting at the corner where it's jamming up against the frame. So it's really the combination of those three things that bother me so much. And I think especially the harder you hit the ball, all those strings that have that kind of leverage against the racket head are put under even more tension. And I think that load really contributes to how the racket head deforms. But the question that really frustrates me is this. If the strings on a racket want to be straight, why wouldn't you just drill the hole for the strings to be straight? Why would you drill the hole like this and then have the strings jam up against the frame and the grommets before they can straighten out? I just don't understand. Like, why would that possibly be a good idea? I'm honestly not sure it is a good idea, but rackets have been this way for so long and I guess it's been okay. But I think the real reason that they do this is because they're following the curve of the racket. Just to make what I'm saying a little more obvious, this is the curve of the racket. If I was to drill a hole perpendicular to the frame, I have to follow the curve of the racket like so. So I think manufacturers figured that makes the most sense. But regardless of whatever angle the hole is at, the strings are gonna wanna straighten out anyway because they're under tension. And at some point, some companies decided, maybe we should just drill those holes straight because that's what the strings wanna do after all. And Wilson was actually a big proponent of this. And one of the benefits that they stress is a bigger sweet spot. And I think that goes back to what I was saying about how if the string is coming out at such an angle, it's not actually starting at the back of the frame where it enters, right? Because on a string that is parallel drilled, the string is mounted back here. But on a string that's not parallel drilled, it's jammed up on the inside of the head, not resting on the outside. And that length difference is really going to be dependent on what angle the hole was drilled at, but also how thick your frame is. And honestly, it's hard to get a straight answer as to why doesn't everyone use this. I think the reality is that on the manufacturing side, if you're not thinking about tennis, it makes sense to go perpendicular to the curve of this racket head shape. Which brings me to this point about why are some strings parallel drilled and not all of them? I think that's a relatively simple question to answer. The closer you get to the very bottom or the very side of the frame, the angle has to go through a lot more frame. And at some point you have to start compromising between what the string pattern should actually look like, what the head shape should actually be like. You start getting really close to the throat here. And there may actually be a little bit more to it than that. The string on the outside of the frame would have very little surface area to rest up on, which might break over time strung under tension. So maybe there's a certain amount of surface area that is needed to confidently have a string go out one side of the frame and come back in and be put under tension. So that is my theory as to why not every single hole is parallel drilled, but most of them are. Now the Yonex Ezo 98 actually pushes this boundary a little bit further. I have not seen a racket have as many parallel drilled holes as the Yonex Ezo 98, but they got that isometric head shape, which flattens out the throat, and I think allows for some more extreme angles to be drilled. But that's really the case on the Ezo 98, not quite so much the V-Core Pro and so on. And I am also aware that I am comparing an Ezo 98, which is a 16 by 19 to an 18 by 20. There's just more strings on here, there's more holes on here, there's a little bit less room for forgiveness, I suppose, because there are more holes. So let's talk about how you can find out if your racket or a racket you are interested in is parallel drilled. Well, if you have the racket on hand, that's very easy, right? I've shown you what it looks like. If the grommet hole is coming out at a different angle than the string 
wants to straighten out at. That is not a parallel drilled hole. Now, I was mentioning earlier the Pro Staff. If you have a racket like that, every single hole follows the curve of the racket. And that's also true for the newest generation of them. I'm actually surprised that Wilson hasn't done anything about that. But it's one of those things that's going to contribute to the feel of the racket. I imagine if they just took that same exact Pro Staff and then did parallel drills instead, they'd have to change quite a lot of little things about the racket for that to work. And even once they did, it would probably change the feel and a lot of people expect a very certain feel from the Pro Staff. I don't think Wilson maybe wants to mess with that formula. But a lot of the newer rackets that come out from Wilson do utilize parallel drilling pretty effectively, such as the Wilson Clash and the Wilson Shift. But also recently the Wilson Blade. But the Wilson Blade wasn't always like that, so it's interesting that they decided to update that on the blade, but not so much the Pro Staff. I really wish I could talk to somebody at Wilson that would answer such a question, but I have a feeling a question like that is beyond the scope of a Wilson rep, if they would even be willing to answer such a question. So I don't know who to talk to about something like that, but I would love to know. Fun fact, the Ultra Pro and the Blade Pro are the retail versions of Pro Stock blades, the H19 and the H22. Those are not parallel drilled at all, but the retail versions of the blades now are. Anyway, if you're not looking at a racket that you have in hand, the method I use to tell if a racket is parallel drilled is simply by going online and finding a high enough resolution picture that I can zoom in and just look at the grommets just like I would in person, no joke. I'll go to Tennis Warehouse and you can zoom way in. They always have a shot of one of their rackets that will reveal to you whether or not they're parallel drilled. Just to show you what I mean, here is the Selenko Whiteout. Now you can go into this feature and if that's enough for you to tell, that's cool. But if it's not, you can drag this to a separate tab and then use control and zoom to zoom in on these grommets. And I can tell very quickly these are not parallel drilled at all. Look at that. It just follows the curve of the frame, all of them. So I'm not into that at all. Yeah, that really bothers me. Whereas, let's see, the V-Core, V-Core 95, even the old generation. Zoom in, look, these aren't parallel drilled, but as soon as you get here, it is. And as soon as, you know, these are all parallel drilled until you get way down here. See, it's a big difference. Look at the angle these are coming out at. I want you guys to be able to eyeball this for yourselves so you can tell before purchasing a racket, right? Now, this is something I look for when I buy a racket. I'm not gonna bother if it's not parallel drilled, but most of these holes, on this racket are. So maybe I'm still interested. I mean, I'm not on this one, but I'm just showing you an example, obviously. And I just zoom in and I look at the angle and if it's not parallel drilled, I am not interested. It's that simple. There are a couple of Technofiber frames that I would probably be interested in otherwise. Not parallel drilled, not buying. Same with the Selenko Whiteout. I'm not sure about the Selenko Blackout, but that would be a simple situation where you just zoom in, look at the grommets, and see, is the grommet following the curve of the racket, or is it drilled in such a way that will cooperate with the way the strings want to straighten out naturally? All right, the final point of this video, why do I care? Well, for every single reason that I talked about, which is why I saved it for the end. I think if you've made it this far in the video, you can see why there are benefits to parallel drilling. And besides the fact that I care so much, I would hope that the fact other racket companies cared enough to actually use this innovation on their rackets and also market it. And for a lot of companies, it's standard. Like I see this on pretty much every head racket, except the Prestige for some reason. I see it on every Yonex, except the Regna of all things. And Babolat actually makes really good use of parallel drilling as well. And they're all about that top spin. So besides all the reasons I listed, I think the biggest one that really stands out for me is just why aren't you doing it? I've said this a few times now, but it really bothers me that you would drill a hole that goes against the direction that the string wants to straighten out. Why would you do that? Because the string is going to straighten out anyway. Why would you drill the grommet in such a way that is going to shove the string and grommet into the corner of that hole you drilled? It puts that grommet under so much stress. And just due to the nature of these strings under tension wanting to straighten out, there's a lot of drama and tension and force right on these corners that is trying to warp the head of the racket. Now, obviously the structural integrity of the racket is stronger than these strings, which are under tension, pulling the racket at this angle. But you have to imagine that it's nudging the frame. It's warping the frame just a little bit. Because again, you have all these holes that are not parallel drilled, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, 50 pounds, and that's just on this side. That's another 150 pounds here. So you got 300 pounds 
of tension being pulled at several angles on the corners of the frame. I just don't see why that's a good thing. But what I'd really love is if I could talk to somebody who manufactures rackets and understands all the benefits the pros and the cons of parallel drilling, both at the manufacturing level, but also at the playing level. I would like to hear it from them. Why do you guys use parallel drilling or why do you guys not? Why do you guys use it on some of your rackets and not all of your rackets? There's no doubt that going from a frame that had no parallel drilling and suddenly changing it to parallel drilling is going to change how the racket feels. Because with all these angles under tension, it's going to be more easy for the head of the racket to deform, which I think is one of the reasons why the E-Zone 98 DR or just the DR series in general, which was the last Yonex racket from from the E-Zone series to not have parallel drilling was for so long spoken of as the best feeling E-Zone. What I think happened was the first generation of E-Zones to go to parallel drilling lost whatever made it feel so good at the time. And it took the E-Zone from that point on a few generations to figure out a way back to that E-Zone DR style of feel. And a lot of people talk about the most current generation of E-Zones to feel most like the DR but I also wouldn't be surprised if there is a unique feeling to a racket that does have parallel drilling versus one that does not. And it's possible that some people might prefer the way a racket feels when it's not parallel drilled. So this video definitely leaves a couple of unanswered questions, but maybe at some point I will get an opportunity to talk to somebody that can actually answer them to my satisfaction. If I ever talk to a factory or manufacturing engineer at Yonex or Wilson, etc., any of these companies, I'll let you guys know how the conversation goes. I may or may not have have some contacts that could get me in touch with such a person. I'll start with some of the reps, but I'd be very surprised if the reps will have any answers. We'll see, but at least you know why I care so much about parallel drilling. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to check out my links below for discounts on my favorite string, Restring Zero. It's an incredibly high performing string, and I think I actually like, whoa, this Head Gravity Pro enough to put Restring Zero in here. So stay tuned for a Head Gravity Pro review as well. All right, I'll catch you later. Bye. Gosh, I can't believe that guy called me an idiot. He's such a jerk. Oh, I hate cyber bullies.